Now, I'm going to, in the next unit, um, I need to apply this. We need now to use oxidation numbers to identify and to balance equations. That's where you'll get your marks in the Leaving Cert exam now. Before I do that, let me backtrack a moment, please. I chose in the last unit to ignore exceptions to the rules. Now, folks, don't even think about going on to number six until you have mastered one to five until you're very clear on the rules, until you can apply oxidation numbers to any compound or ion or element. Okay, go back and practice and try the tests I've given you. And if you're doing that, then it's time to move on to using them. There's no point using them if you're dodgy and applying them. You must have the rules right first, please. I'm now about to deal with some exceptions to the rules. There's only a few of them there. And I think it's easier to deal with the exceptions as separate entities rather than putting them into the rules as we go along. Okay, and they are there for you. I'm going to list them for you now. Exceptions to the rules. Oxygen is always minus two, except for peroxides. Now, what's that word? Peroxide, except for peroxides, where it is minus one. Now, that's a peroxide. <coughs> that's a peroxide, okay? That's a peroxide. That is not a peroxide. Sorry, I keep checking my board to see that you'll be able to read that. You will. You're okay. Yeah. All right. <coughs> it's very important now that that's a peroxide. That's a peroxide. That isn't. How will you recognize a peroxide if you see one? Well, the smart answer is they're the only two that you're likely to get. But um, will you take it for long? It's a two and a two, even though there's a slight flaw in that for leaving cert that won't arise. They're the two you need to look out for, okay? Be very careful, right? Now, by the way, they're exceptions, but if you apply the rules, you'd still get them right. You know, our rule is oxygen is always minus two, except for peroxides, okay? Now, that's not a peroxide. I'm reminding you of that. If you put in, in this particular instance, hydrogen is plus one twice, therefore that would have to be minus one twice, if you get the idea. So that's what I'm telling you. Remember, please, if it's a peroxide, if it's a peroxide, oxygen is always minus two except for peroxides. And the same applies here, plus one twice. Therefore, that would have to be minus one. Okay, in peroxides, oxygen is minus one. Just keep an eye on That one in particular is very prominent, as you know. Hydrogen peroxide is used to produce oxygen gas in the lab, yeah? That's a, an ionic compound. That's a covalent compound. That's not, now, by the way, that's not a peroxide. And so the rules are usual. Minus two twice, and therefore that's plus four. That is not an exception. So don't worry about that. It's fine, all right? Next. Um, the second one is the compound oxyfluoride, OF2. Now, I have a couple of things to say to you about that. Do you see the way it's written, OF2? That's very important now. The most electronegative element, the negative element, is at the back. And fluorine is the most electronegative element in the periodic table. It's the only element that's more electronegative than oxygen. We're used to finding oxygen as the Murphy. Okay? In this case, it's the Paddy. Will you be aware of that, please? Okay. In this case, it's the plus. And so I've no more to say to you. That's minus one. Sorry, that's minus one twice. Therefore, that must be plus two. And that's correct. OF2, oxyfluoride. The oxygen is always minus two, except for OF2, where it happens to be plus two. And there you go. If you apply the Paddy Murphy theory, you'll get it right anyway. Now, that's a strange looking molecule. I doubt if you'd miss it in the exam. You might overlook them now. Be careful. OK, you might overlook them. So be careful of what you're doing. And the third one here then is metal hydrides. Now, I'd be worried about this one. Metal hydride. I'll write the word out for you. Metal H-Y-D-R-I-D-E. Now, do you know what that is? A hydride is a compound. Any compound ending in I-D-E, any compound ending in I-D-E, okay, is going to have only two elements. And one of them is going to be hydrogen, okay, a metal and hydrogen only, right? So you have things like there's sodium hydride, there's calcium hydride, okay, calcium is a NCO2, etc. And you can see what I'm dealing with there, all right? Just in working through that, that's rather important that you that you can work with that, okay, that we can deal with. Now, so I, I'm, I'm basically, um, <clears throat> sorry a moment now, let me give you some light. 
Um, I'm dealing with sodium hydride and calcium hydride, <coughs> and we're going to put that right like that. Are you okay? Now, please, the Paddy Murphy theory will get you out of all this. Okay, it's a minus. So, uh, with metal hydrides, the hydrogen should be plus one. It's always plus one, except for metal hydrides, where it is minus one. Okay, that's plus two, and that would be, of course, uh, twice uh, minus one. Okay, hydrogen is always plus one, except for metal hydrides. It's very unusual to find that the hydrogen is, in fact, the Murphy. It's usually the Paddy, as you can see. In a lot of compounds, HCl, H2SO4, etc., it's always the Paddy part of the molecule, the plus. Okay, it's unusual. Even the way it's printed should kind of give you a heads up. Now, what's my concern about this? My concern here is that there are 81 metals in the periodic table. So there are 81 metal hydrides. So you might be just taken aback if someone came up with something like nickel hydride, you know? And um, will you be careful, please? Okay, you mightn't think of the rule like that. Be careful. Hydrogen is always plus one, except for metal hydrides, where it is minus one. Okay, and I suppose I've told you, if you apply the Paddy Murphy theory, you won't forget it anyway. So please just keep that in mind and you're going to do fine. Now, this is really asking you to be alert and to be aware. <clears throat> now, as far as you are concerned for leaving cert, there are no other exceptions. <clears throat> They're on the board then. Oxygen is always minus two, except for peroxides, where it is minus one, okay? This weird molecule here, OF2 oxyfluoride, is the only case where the oxygen is the Paddy in the Paddy Murphy theory. So it's usually minus two, it's plus, one, plus two here. And this case is metal hydrides. Hydrogen is always plus one, except for metal hydrides where it's minus one. Now please, the exceptions, you just need to be alert to them because there could be one turn up in an equation somewhere and you'd be in trouble. Now I didn't do that in the last section, I was only complicating things. But now please, I'm pausing again and asking you something. Are you okay right down to number five? If you're not, please go back. Okay, just go back and deal with it, you'll be fine. But don't bother progressing any further <clears throat> until you deal with that. Now, using oxidation numbers is next. And that's what I intend dealing with now, number five. Okay, and these questions are going to come straight from your notes. I'll put them all on the board and I'll deal with them there. Sorry, now I keep checking your visibility on this, but I hope you're all right. That most of what I put on the board, you can see. All right. And then um, I'm just hoping that, you know, you're going to get this okay. Now, the next thing is using oxidation numbers to identify. What they're likely to ask you in leaving cert is the following. Is this a redox reaction is one possible question. And the answer is yes or no, but obviously they mean you to verify it. And you verify it using oxidation numbers. Let me be more audacious than that. I could see you inside in the leaving cert looking at an equation and saying, I wonder, is this redox? And within 30 seconds, you could answer that question. By assigning oxidation numbers, it's very simple. You assign oxidation numbers to everything, okay, to all the atoms. If there's a change in oxidation number from left to right, then yes, it is a redox reaction. If there's no change from left to right, it's not. It's as black and white as that. Now, your problem will be this. You get an oxidation number wrong, and you'll come to the wrong conclusion. So it's very important you go back on this now and make sure that that's okay before you progress any further, okay? So I'm giving you this. Which of the following equations are redox reactions? This is the first one. Magnesium carbonate. Magnesium carbonate goes to magnesium oxide and carbon dioxide. Now, don't worry about it. If you haven't seen an equation of that before, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. You're only using it as from the paper. That's what's there and that's what you're doing. There's no problem. First thing you do then, the method is very simple. Assign oxidation numbers to everything and see if there's a change from left to right in any oxidation number. So here we go. Are you okay with that? Oxygen is minus two, three times. Now, please, do you know what to do here? There's no rule about magnesium. Magnesium is in group two in the periodic table. That's plus two. Now, I better go back for a moment. Mg2 plus and CO3 two minus. I'd expect you to know that guy. That's the carbonate ion. It's one of the tests on your course. You meet it elsewhere now, but you've met that back in acids and bases. Carbonate, okay? That's carbonate. That's my, that Paddy Murphy theory again. Here we go, right? <clears throat> Keep that in mind. Now, that should be plus two. Slip it a pen there, guys. Okay, that should be plus two. Okay, and this is minus the oxygen there. So what's that going to be? 
plus two, minus six, plus four is right. Now use the arrow every time, will you please, so you don't get too cluttered there, okay? You know what you're doing. That's that, that's that, and it must add up to zero because it's a neutral molecule. This one, oxygen is minus two, and the magnesium is plus two. Okay, again, that would be Mg2 plus and O2 minus, but that's fine. There's a rule about that. And I'd like to think there was a rule about that too. Group one elements are always plus one. Group two elements are always plus two. I hope that's okay. And here again, oxygen minus two twice, and therefore that must be plus four. Are you okay with that? Sorry, I'm just checking that you're, you're that that's legible enough for you can see it. You are, you're fine. Okay. <clears throat> And so we inspect. The magnesium went from plus two to plus two, no change. The carbon went from plus four to plus four, no change. The oxygen went from minus two, be careful now, not minus six, minus two to minus two, no change. This is not redox. That is not a redox reaction, you've answered the question. Now, when they ask you, is this a redox reaction, they're not looking for a yes or no answer. They want you to support your answer with evidence, and that's what you do, right? Very important. The second one is a complicated enough equation. It's given to you. Cr K2, Cr2O7, that's called potassium dichromate. It reacts with HCl, and it gives you KCl. Remember, all this is on the paper now, plus chromium Cl3 plus H2O plus Cl2. Now, I, I taunt you again with this concept now that if you think that that's a difficult one and that's an easy one, then you're not up to speed with that stuff. Now, please go back, okay? There's no such thing as a difficult question here. If you have a good method, you'll master them all. And you must be confident about this now and you must grow in confidence by trying them and seeing how you're doing. Now, I have to assign oxidation numbers to everything here and see is there a change in oxidation number. That's very good. And I'm going to do that. Oxygen is minus two, seven times. Potassium is plus one, twice. <clears throat> Potassium is in group one, okay. That's the Paddy Murphy theory. K plus and Cr2 or seven, two minus. Okay, that's group one, that's a plus one, that's okay. So what is the chromium? Minus 14 plus two plus 12 is rubbish. Very common mistake, yeah, it is plus six. Twice, plus six is the chromium. This is a halogen, minus one, that's hydrogen, plus one, that's a rule. There's a halogen, minus one, and the potassium is plus one. Okay, plus and minus. This is the halogen minus one three times. And so the chromium there is going to be plus three. Oxygen minus two, hydrogen plus one twice. I generally use the arrow when there is a deduction, when it's not a rule. Okay, this must add up to zero, right? Good, this must add up to zero. There's a rule. A halogen is minus one, minus three, so that must be plus three. Here again, they're both rules, so I don't need to write anything down. Plus one and minus two. And that's minus one a halogen. And that's incorrect. Can you see that? Another common error. <clears throat> that should be not. Now, are we okay with that? That's a free element. Now, inspect. You have assigned oxidation numbers to it, and it says there clearly for you, okay, assign oxidation numbers to all atoms. If there's a change in oxidation number for any atom, then the reaction is redox. And there it is. Look, watch me now, please. Plus six to plus three for chromium. Now, technically speaking, you should work from left to right. Go for potassium first. Potassium is plus one, plus one, no change. Chromium is plus six, plus three, there is a change. If the oxidation number, if the oxidation number decreases, one of your definitions, okay, one of your definitions up here, okay, for oxidation is, okay, oxidation is a, an increase in oxidation number, reduction is a decrease. That is reduction, okay, that is reduction. Plus six to plus three is reduction. Very good. Okay, next, oxygen minus two, minus two, no change. Hydrogen plus one, plus one, no change. Chlorine minus one, ho ho, minus one to naught. Chlorine minus one to naught, can you see that? Minus one to naught is an increase, so that is oxidation, and you'd write that on the arrow. Now use big loops for this, give yourself loads of space, and be very tidy, please, will you? Also, can I ask you now, please, spread out these equations. 
and another ground rule for you under no circumstances take an equation onto a second line if you have to go into the margin go into the margin write it again but please lay it out correctly so that you can use it that's very important are we okay with that now if you're working like that you'll have no issue at all but you have to be careful as to how you're presenting this now so what has been reduced then and what has been oxidized now all they asked you was is this a redox reaction and the answer of course is yes and you're going to tell me in a moment right now what has been reduced the temptation would be to say now that the chromium is reduced but there's no chromium there it's the package in which the chromium came that's the substance that's been reduced even though the chromium led us to that don't say the chromium has been reduced there is no chromium there it is the potassium dichromate it's the K2CCR2O7 that has been reduced and that's fine there's no issue with that are you okay that's that one and of course this one has been oxidized we'd like to say the chlorine was oxidized it hasn't it's the HCl the whole package that has been oxidized so that's a redox reaction that's reduced that's gaining electrons that's losing electrons and obviously that's that and that's what you're asked to do there now that's exactly what you do that's one use of oxidation numbers can i show you here using oxidation numbers to identify okay they might go further than that with you they might say okay show that this is a redox reaction and identify the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent in this reaction <clears throat> Now, be careful with that, won't you? <clears throat> Identify the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent. Now, do you know what you're going to do to get that? Identify the oxidizing agent and the reducing agent. Do you remember the rule of thumb? An oxidizing agent is always reduced. A reducing agent is always oxidized. Are you okay then? So that is reduced. So that's the oxidizing agent. This is oxidized, so it is the reducing agent. Now, I wouldn't be doing that in the exam. I mean, that's fine as a draft. Okay, but you'd have to state clearly that K2Cr2O7 is the oxidizing agent. It's clearly seen from this. I would write that reduction of the word red on that, and I'd write the word ox on that, and you're talking about these two substances. So I'm repeating that again for you now. Show using oxidation numbers that this is a redox reaction. Identify the substance oxidized, the substance reduced, the reducing agent, the oxidizing agent. If they ask you to identify the substance reduced, there's the substance reduced. There's the substance oxidized. The number went up. The number went down. Or identify the reducing agent or the oxidizing agent. The oxidizing agent is always reduced. The reducing agent is always oxidized. So there you are. And that's exactly what you'd be doing with that. And that's what they require of you. Now, that's the first use, okay, to identify things. We're going to get better at that now. And it's very important that you work with it. Now, the second part is more demanding and much more popular in leaving cert. But you have to be ready for it now. And I'm going to do that next with you. The next part now is to balance a chemical equation using oxidation numbers. Use oxidation numbers to balance the following equation, right? Now, I have three equations in the notes, and they're nasties, okay? And they get more nasty as we go down. And I'd ask you to be particularly careful in relation to this. I'm going to take the first one here now. Now, these were hand-picked so that you would be tested with them. And take it, please. They're very good for revising coming up to an exam, okay? And we have some rules here that I'm going to deal with now. I'm dealing with now using oxidation numbers to balance an equation. Step one, assign oxidation numbers to everything, okay? So I'm going to take the first equation and write it out for you now. I'll write this one in red, I think. Um, and then I'll put in the oxidation numbers in black. I'm hoping that will be okay. All right? And I'm going to do that for you <clears throat> as follows. Um, we have... KiO3 plus Ki. Now, you do not need to be familiar with any of these equations to work with them. Goes to HCl plus HCl, goes to iodine I2 plus H2O plus KCl. Now, I'm repeating again, that would be presented to you on the Leaving Cert exam paper. It will be given to you like that. I'm trying to see. Um, do I need to clarify that? That's fine. Okay, you can see all that. Now, please, will you be very careful, because I'm a dab handed at myself, of taking it down incorrectly. 
you'll be raging with yourself, okay? Double check, please, will you, that you have the right equation down, the right compounds, right? Because you less waste a lot of time trying to balance something that's not correct. KiO3, Ki, HCl, iodine, H2O, and KCl. You're asked to balance that equation, okay? You're asked to balance it. So we have to assign oxidation numbers to everything. Now, please, if you don't recognize some of these now, that doesn't matter at all. Okay, just realize now there's only two parts to every name. That's called potassium iodate, IO3. Anything with oxygen it ends in AT, <clears throat> iodate. That's potassium iodide, IDE. There's only two elements, yeah? That's HCl, don't worry about it, iodine. And it, if you don't know them, that doesn't matter at all. You can still apply. I'm going to assign oxidation numbers then. Minus two, three times. Potassium is plus one, so we must come to some conclusion about the iodine. Are you all okay that the iodine is plus five? Plus five, okay. This is a halogen minus one, that's potassium plus one. Halogen minus one, hydrogen plus one. Free element, zero. Be careful you wouldn't put a minus one in there, the halogen. It's a free element, right? Next is minus two, plus one, twice. Minus one and plus one, there you go. Now, please, I'm repeating again, if you get one of those numbers wrong, you're going to waste a lot of time trying to balance this. It's very important you're familiar with your laws, your rules, and that you go and do plenty of them to make sure you're sharp on them. You get very good at them, but just take a few and do them regularly and see that you're okay. That's the first step. Assign oxidation numbers to all atoms. Next, identify what is oxidized and what is reduced and balance the electron transfer. Okay, identify, okay, what is oxidized and reduced and balance the electron transfer. Now watch me, please. Potassium is plus one, potassium is plus one. I'm working from left to right. Iodine next, plus five, and iodine is naught. There's one for me. Plus five to naught is reduction. I'm going to go further than that with you now. Reduction is a gain, and it's a gain of... Sorry, it's a gain of five electrons. Are you all okay where I got that from now? Sorry, no, my writing is terrible. See, here I am, okay? It's a gain of five electrons, okay? Plus five, not a gain of five electrons. It went down by five. I'm moving on, oxygen is minus two, oxygen is minus two. Potassium is plus one, potassium is plus one. Iodine is minus one, iodine is not. Chlorine, no, it's that one so. So you're going to go from iodine here, minus one, to the same one here, that one there, naught. Minus one to naught is an increase, that's oxidation. Minus one to naught is an increase, so that's oxidation. Oxidation is a loss, and it's a loss of a single electron. It went up by just one. <clears throat> Identify what is oxidized and what is reduced. So, what is oxidized? The answer is, not the iodine, but that the potassium iodide and what is reduced not the iodine there but the potassium iodate okay now these are difficult and demanding equations i'm being deliberate in this in that if you can do these you'll do many of the ones you'll get and that's very important our next unit we're going to look at past exam questions on this there are some very reasonable marks to be picked up here you could score very high in them and i'd like to think you were equipped to do that when you're finished this okay so here you go and you've that done, okay? So we've that done, and that obviously in this case, what has been reduced? This substance, KiO3, KiO3 has been reduced. Identify what is oxidized and what is reduced. Can I ask you a question then? Do you know what the reducing agent is? It's the substance that was oxidized. That's the reducing agent, it was oxidized, okay? What is the oxidizing agent? It's the substance that was reduced. <clears throat> that is, okay, the oxidizing agent, potassium iodate. Very good. Okay, and that's it. And what's that there? <clears throat> that's just a condition under which the reaction occurs. You don't need to worry about it, okay? But that's it. Now, the rule says, identify what is oxidized and reduced and balance the electron transfer. This fellow is gaining five electrons. This fellow is losing one. So in order to balance them, I must put a five in there. 
five ones gives you five. Okay, this is gaining five, but this is only supplying one. So I need five of them for every one of them. I have now balanced the electron transfer. Step number two, identify what is oxidized and reduced and balance the electron transfer. Now I have a caution for you. Under no circumstances in any subsequent step can you alter the ratio one to five there because the electrons are balanced and that's very important. Are you okay with that? The electrons are balanced. Now, that's step number two done. I've identified what's oxidized, I've identified what's reduced, and I've balanced the electron transfer. Now, I'm asking you to write these things onto your loop every time you write. Give yourself half a page here now when you're doing this and put them onto your loop. Okay, now they need to be done on separate pages. Don't be trying to stuff any of these into your notes now. You need separate pages, and each time you need to try what's in your notes. Okay, and that's very important. Next, and the final stage is balance the remaining atoms by inspection. Okay, you've now balanced the electron transfer, balance the remaining atoms by inspection. You start from left and you work your way across to do that. Watch me, please. One potassium and five potassiums is six potassiums, so I need a six here. I'm working from left to right now. One iodine and five iodines is six iodines. I have two here, so I need a three there. Very good. Leave oxygen and hydrogen to last. That's a good tip for you now. I did that one. I did that one. Leave oxygen to last. You can pop water in your nitro side if you're stuck. Okay? Leave it to last. That's very good. Okay, so I'm leaving that, and I'm skipping. I've that done. I've that done. Leave hydrogen to last. I'm doing the chlorine next. Now, that's what gives you a heads up now here. I've left hydrogen and oxygen to last. I'm not tinkering with anything else. So I'm gone right over to chlorine next. I'm balancing that. There are six chlorines here. So you need a six there. And the chlorines are balanced. And finally, I must balance the hydrogens and the oxygens. Now, take a look, please. I have three oxygens here, and I have six hydrogens. Three oxygens. If I put a three in front of that, I'll have three oxygens, and I'll also have six hydrogens. That's very good. So I'm putting a, a three in here, and that's going to solve that for me. Now, folks, the message is the sequence in which you do things. It's not about what you do, but it's the sequence that you do it. There are people who will look at that for 15 minutes and not balance it, because their sequence in which they're doing it isn't right. Okay, the sequence is I'm leaving hydrogen and oxygen to last. So I'm balancing the chlorine next. I have six chlorines here. Sorry, I'm not. What am I saying to you? I'm balancing the oxygens next. Isn't that right? Um, I have the rest balanced. The oxygen has three oxygens there. I have one oxygen there. Put a three in there and the oxygens are balanced and the hydrogens balanced as well. That's finished. And I have a further rule there, just by the way, step number four, rewrite the final equation. That gets a bit of a battlefield, doesn't it? It gets a bit untidy. Rewrite it when you're finished. Now, the examiner needs to see this in case I'm telling you that you should get rid of that now and write out the answer. No, the examiner must be able to see that. Very important. But you rewrite it. That's a one, a five, a six, a three, a three, and a six. Now, all the rules again, I'm going back very quickly. Assign oxidation numbers to everything. Most people have a problem with this because one of these numbers is wrong. If you have a reason or a question as to why any of them are wrong, you must have that solved. You need to get back to me on that if there's an issue there. Why is it that? Why do I have the numbers I have? Okay, very, very important. If you have that, you have no issue. Once you get that right then, identify what's oxidized and reduced. Balance the electron transfer, the magic number one to five. And then I, I can't tinker with that anymore then. Be very careful. And then balance the remaining atoms by inspection. Starting from the left, potassium first, ID next. Leave hydrogen and oxygen to last. I've potassium balanced already. I've iodine balanced already. I'm leaving hydrogen to last. So chlorine is the next one. And I had six chlorines there, so I put the six in there. And only now do I go at the hydrogens and oxygens. Now that's fairly sound if you do that. Now that's not easy. But if you're finding it easy, you're on top of this. And that's where I'd like it to be. Now, it's going to get worse, by the way, because I've picked questions that you have to kind of deal with. And um, I'll do the next one with you now. The next one. Um, now, I've given you a long version of the second one. I think they won't give you that in the exam. They'll give you the shorter version, which I'm going to give you now. OK, and I'll write that in. Um, I'll write that in red as well. I'm just trying to see. Can I place it on the board for you so you can see it to a maximum? Um, I think you're OK. I can do that. OK. Um, <clears throat> and here we go. MnO4 minus plus 
Fe 2 plus plus H plus goes to Mn 2 plus Fe 3 plus plus H2O. Now that's an abridged version of number two in your notes. Take it down, please. It's an abridged version of number two in your notes. And the one in your notes has a lot of spectators. I've decided that that won't come up in that format. I'm giving you that one. I'm asking you to be aware of that, okay? And I'm going to assign the oxidation numbers to you now, and that should be good. You should be well able to deal with that, okay? Can you read that, okay? Now, it's very important that you're, you're working with a fixed equation, and that's given to you in the exam paper now. So be aware of that, please, won't you? Just in what you're actually doing, or than anything else, okay? Just be aware of that now. I'm going to assign oxidation numbers to everything. Here I go. Minus 2, 4 times. Therefore, that must be plus 7. Okay, by the way, I'll be showing you that reagent in our, one of our next units, um, KMNO4, potassium manganate 7. Very, very important, okay, that you have that. Right, good. This is plus 2, simple ion. This is plus 1, simple ion. This is plus 2. This is plus 3. This is minus 2, and this is plus 1 twice. Everybody okay with that? Assign oxidation numbers to everything. I've done that. Identify what is oxidized and reduced. Start from the left. Manganese is plus 7 and plus 2. There you go. Plus 7 to plus 2 is a decrease. That's reduction. Reduction. Reduction is a gain. And it's a gain of 5 electrons. Do you see where I got that from? It went from 7 to 5, so it decreased by 5. So it has reductions again, and it's gained 5 electrons. And I see uh, oxygen is minus 2 and minus 2, right? Next is iron, plus 2 to plus 3. Plus 2 to plus 3. That's an increase. That's oxidation. Oxidation is a loss, and it's a loss of a single electron. Do you know where I got that from? It went up by 1, so 1 electron involved as a result. Identify what is oxidized and what is reduced. What is oxidized? The Fe2 plus ion. What is reduced? The MnO4 minus ion. That's the manganese 7 ion, okay? Don't worry about it. Um, why that we call manganese 7, by the way, is MnO4 minus. <clears throat> if you assigned oxidation numbers, as I did there, minus 2, 4 times, that comes out as plus 7. So it's often called the manganese 7 ion because the oxidation number is 7. Okay, good. <clears throat> Now, and balance the electron transfer. Okay, this guy is losing one electron, and this guy is gaining five, so I need a five in there. Now, do you notice what I've done? I'm using a different color from my contribution to what I'm given. And it's important that you do that. I give yourself loads of space so you can pop in these numbers. Okay, so I need five ones to balance the five. Now, here I go again. The next step is balance the remaining atoms by inspection. I've just balanced the electron transfer. Okay, one to five. Under no circumstances can that ratio be upset. So if you're going to do anything in this equation now, it can't be done there. It has to be over here, okay? Balance the remaining atoms by inspection is number, is um, question, is basically the next step. Manganese, one there, and manganese, one there, that's fine. Leave oxygen to last. Five irons here, so I need a five here. Very good. The irons are balanced. And hydrogen I'm leaving to last. I have everything else done in hydrogen. Now, folks, I have to balance hydrogen and oxygen next. If something is on its own, it's the very last thing you balance because it's interfering with nothing else. You'd balance the oxygen before the hydrogen. Are you clear on that? Because it's on its own. That's very important now. I'll be doing exam questions next with you now, and I hope you're going to feel a buzz that you're on top of this and that you're mastering it. There's four oxygens here, so there'd be four here. And now the hydrogen's last. Four twos are eight. Eight, and multiply that by eight, and there you go. And that's balanced, I hope. Okay, it is balanced. Okay, that's right. That's it. Now you rewrite it underneath. One, five, eight, one, five, four. Very good. That's what you do, okay? Rewrite the final equation as time. Now, let the examiner see all of that. Let this be very clear. You can't kind of just, you know, you can't speculate on this now and say like that you balanced it by inspection. No, no, no. They'd expect you to use your oxidation numbers and that's vitally important you would do that. Okay, and um, so you're starting to think things are getting easier. Now, let me give you a nightmare. 
Let me give you a nightmare equation here. I have lifted this out of the doldrums because I think it could be very valuable to you. This, sometimes you're given an easy or a simple equation and you get the impression this will be easy to balance. Not correct. Sometimes the more horrendous one can create the problem for you and that can be the issue. Look at this one now and I'm going to write it. I want to put it on the screen for you so that you can all see it. It's the last one in your notes. I want to make sure you're okay with that, right? I'll go right to the top with this this one up and this is now for balancing and there'll be all sorts of problems arise here now cl2 plus oh minus going to cl minus plus clo3 minus plus h2o plus h2o and you're asked to balance that equation. Now it looks innocent enough. I hope you're going to agree with me. Looks innocent enough. I want to just tell you now, will you be very careful with it, please? However you go about it. We have to apply all the rules now. I hope you're okay. It looks very straightforward. I don't see any problem with it until we go through. Everything goes wrong here now. And this is as tough as they get. If you can manage this, you'll manage any of them, okay? Watch me at it now, please. That's a free element. I'm assigning oxidation numbers zero. Hydrogen plus one, oxygen minus two, correct. Simple ion minus one. Oxygen minus two, three times. Therefore, the chlorine is going to be plus five. The chlorine is plus five. Good, because it's minus one, it's a complex ion. Minus two for oxygen, plus one twice for hydrogen. And there you go. Assign oxidation numbers to everything I've that done. Next, identify what is oxidized and reduced and balance the electron transfer. Not to minus one. I'll take that one for a start. Not to minus one. That's a decrease. So that is reduction. Reduction is again, and again is a single electron. I'm saying that again now. Not to minus one is a decrease. That's reduction. Reduction is a gain of electrons, and so it goes uh, there. One electron is down there. Very good. So that's what is reduced. Next. Oxygen minus two, oxygen minus two, no change. Hydrogen plus one, hydrogen plus one, no change. It appears, it appears that something is reduced there, but there's nothing oxidized. That's not possible. Okay, you're overlooking something if that's the case. There's something else happening there, okay? If that's reduced, you could deduce, well, that one must be oxidized. It isn't. You have to be careful here now. Observe again. The chlorine becomes Cl minus here. But look, the chlorine could always so become plus five. So what's the problem? This is the problem. The chlorine is also oxidized. Oxidation, that's an increase from naught to five. Oxidation is a loss of electrons and it loses five electrons. Very good. Now, I must ask you the question. This is something you should ask yourself fairly regularly. What is the problem? And I don't mean that in any glib way now, but if you know the problem, you're generally a long way towards solving it. What is the problem? The problem here is I've been asked to balance an equation and it appears that the same substance is oxidized and reduced. That's right. It appears the same substance oxidized and reduced, except my expression isn't great. I'd be far better off if I said, some of it has been oxidized and some of it has been reduced. What would you do then if some of the substance was oxidized and some was reduced? Here's what I would do. I would write it a second time and I'm changing the color deliberately for that. Okay, I would change it like that. Some of it is going to be oxidized and some of it is going to be reduced. And at the end of the work, I'll put the two of them back together again. Now, are you clear? It is silly now to say the same substance is oxidized and reduced. What it means is some of this was oxidized to the chlorate, the hypochlorite ion, okay? Hypochlorate ion, okay? And whereas this has been reduced to the chloride ion. Now, don't worry about that other than the fact that it must be treated separately. Now, uh, do you see what's happening here? Now, everything that could go wrong here is going wrong. And it's a very good exemplar and a very good one for training you, right? If you find the same substance is oxidized and reduced, separate it, write it twice. 
okay and treat them as separate substances for the balancing purposes you're fine so some of this is being oxidized and some of it has been reduced and we'll work away and everything else is fine identify what's oxidized and what's reduced and balance the electron transfer this fellow is losing five electrons this fellow is gaining one so there's a five to go in there i suspect at the end of the question i'll be adding them back together i'll be writing it as six are you okay with that? And that's what you'll be doing there. Very good. Now, next, okay, and balance the electric. Balance the remaining atoms by inspection. Now, everything that could go wrong here will go wrong, so watch my problem now. Two chlorines and ten chlorines is twelve chlorines. And I have one chlorine here and one chlorine here is two chlorines, so I need to balance that. If I put eleven in there to balance, or if I put 11 in there, true balance. Or if I put 6 in there and 6 in there, true balance. Or if I put 8 in there and 4 in there, true balance. Or if I put 10 in there and 2 in there, true balance. Do you see the problem? It appears any numbers would balance it. But only one number is correct. So what do you do when you have a situation like that? You have 12 chlorines here and you have 2 here and 11 and 1 or 11 and 1 or 10 and 2 and 2 and 10 would all balance it. How are you going to balance it? There's a very simple rule and the rule is follow the arrows. Follow the arrows. 2 chlorines, put a 2 in there. 10 chlorines, put a 10 in there. Okay, you've balanced the chlorines now. That's 12 and that's 12, very good. And we'll move on with the rest. Not ready yet, have a look. Oxygen and hydrogen are the only two that are left and how are we fixed? At the moment now, look what's going to happen here. Watch please. I have three twos are six oxygens. Yeah, three twos are six oxygens and one is seven oxygens. And watch for a moment. If I put a seven in there, I'll balance the oxygens very good. But what about the hydrogens now? I have seven hydrogens, but I have only two here. So that's not balancing. So what are we going to do? I'll do it the other way around. Okay, um, uh, two hydrogens and seven hydrogens. I'll balance the hydrogens first. Two hydrogens here, and I'll put two in there, so the hydrogens are now balanced. Two hydrogens, two hydrogens. And now the oxygens, you still have, uh, you have six of them there, you have seven of them there, you have only two of them there, that won't balance. Now, that's a conundrum that could arise in leaves there very easily. How would you describe the problem now? We often take the, it won't balance. It's something we, it won't balance, okay? We need another rule for this. If you find every time you balance one atom, you throw the other one out, then you need some way of dealing with that. So that's not the way to do it. I'm taking that out again. It's not balancing. I'm failing to balance by inspection. And based on that, I'm going to give you a little rule of thumb now, and you might need to take it down. Let me tell you first, then I'll call it back to you. If you fail to balance by inspection, okay, try counting the charges on each side and then balance the charges. Now I'm going to ask you to write that down, please. It's not written anywhere. It's not in any notes I'd like. If you fail to balance by inspection, if you got that, write it down now, please. You should have a pad with you and write it down. If you fail to balance by inspection, try counting the charges on both sides and balance these charges. And I'm going to do that for you now. Try counting the charges on both sides and we balance the charges. Now watch me at it here now, please. I'm going to do this for you, all right? On the left-hand side, we have a single charge. It is a single minus. I'm writing it down as one comma minus. We have only one minus on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, I have 10 minuses and two minuses. That's 12 minuses on the right-hand side. I have one minus on the left-hand side and I have 12 minuses on the right-hand side. Are you okay? Now, I guarantee you that if you multiply that by 12, you have the equation balanced. Okay? If you multiply that by 12, I guarantee you that's balanced very easily. So you need an unlocking number. Let me say all that again to you now. You're failing to balance by inspection. Every time I balance this, this one is out. Every time I balance this one, the other one is out. It's not balancing for you. If you're not balancing by inspection, try counting charges on both sides and you will find, if you do that, you will find it will balance very easily. There's only one minus here. 
There's two minuses and 10 minuses here is 12 minuses. Multiply that by 12 and you've advanced. Okay, multiply by 12, you've advanced. Now watch me please, not quite, but we're nearly there. Okay, 12 oxygens, I have six oxygens here, put a six in front of that and it balances, and six hydrogens, six twos are 12, 12 hydrogens, it's balanced. Generally speaking, when an equation balances, its charges are balanced as well. And can I verify this down here for you? I'm going to scrub this and verify that for you, right? I'm going to take that away again. <clears throat> On this equation, that's in a balanced equation, the charges should still be balanced. Watch me, please. Can you read that now? Sorry, no, but it gets very messy. That's a plus there, isn't it? Yeah, good. Now, look what I have. Five twos are ten pluses. Ten pluses. And eight pluses is eighteen pluses. And one minus is seventeen pluses. I'm going to do that again with you now. Five twos are ten. That's ten plus. And eight plus is eighteen plus. Eighteen plus and one minus is seventeen plus. On the other side, two pluses. Five threes are fifteen. That's seventeen pluses. And it's balanced. If the equation is balanced, the charges generally are balanced. Now, please, don't go to charges unless you're failing to do it the other way. You don't need to draw all that on yourself. I think that's worth mentioning more than anything else. And if you do that, you won't have any issues at all. Now, I am saying to you, as we have balanced that now, that's as difficult as they get in your defense. And if you're handling that, okay. Now, folks, by the way, you must write the final equation. And that's going to be 6, 12, 10, 2, and 6, when you rewrite it finally on the exam paper, right? Examiner wants to see all of that, I bring them back together again. And if you're into numbers, you might like to divide by 2. There's a common factor 2 there. If you didn't divide by 2, it's still balanced. You're entitled to all the marks. Okay, so don't concern yourself with that. But I mean, just I'm trying to show you all the anomalies that can arise before we get into anything. Now, my next task will be to look at some leaving cert exam papers, which I hope you'll find encouraging because these are as tough as they get. When we go to the exam paper, you should be pleasantly surprised how on top of this you are. Now, please, I must give you a word of advice here now. Please go back. Go back on this before you go forward. Don't bother going to exam papers now until you really reinforce that, because once you've got to that stage, you're really on top of this. There won't be any problem there.